This is why DNA testing should be made mandatory at birth. A paternity conflict between this couple led to the wife tragically stabbing her husband to death in Baybridge. This is Geraldine Yoni, a 26-year-old woman who was married to Majahana Mazibugo, a 52-year-old. Majahana was twice her age, which leads me to believe that he had been previously married. The two had a six-month-old baby together, but Geraldine had two other children from her previous relationship. Both Geraldine and Majahana were heavy drinkers and I really doubt that they were customarily married. From doing research on this case, I truly believe that they were cohabiting. Geraldine was originally from Gwanda but lived in Dulibatzimu in Baitbridge with her husband. On the 4th of March 2017, Geraldine woke up early in order to prepare for her man to leave for work. He worked at National Foods, which is one of the biggest companies in Zimbabwe. She boiled his water and then made him breakfast. She even walked him out, carrying her baby on her back, hoping to buy bread on her way back. When she came back home, she spent her day ordinarily doing her household duties as a wife. At sunset, she then called him to remind him that he needed to bring home relish because she assumed that he was on his way home from work. Work. He however told her that she needed to make a plan, that he was not yet on his way home. She then used the money that she got from selling sheets to buy relish and she made dinner. At around 7.30, he still was not home. So she called him to inform him that their baby was not feeling well, that he was supposed to bring medicine on his way back. He did not seem receptive to a call, so she hung up and started drinking. He only arrived home at around 8 p.m. and he was drunk. Apparently, he had been out drinking with his friends. When she greeted him, he ignored her and proceeded to their bedroom. She asked him what was wrong, but he did not answer. He seemed very angry. What was bothering was the fact that he believed that their six-month-old baby was not his. He was failing to accept the possibility that this baby might not be his. Shortly after, his friends arrived and she heard his friend asking her husband where his hole was, which means that the friends knew that these two were having a paternity conflict. He had been telling his friends that his wife had had an affair. Hearing this she was very angry and she decided to go outside and confront her husband but on her way out she met her husband in the kitchen he then told her that today he was going to teach her a lesson removed his belt and attacked her she managed to take the belt away from him and kick him in his groin the scuffle intensified so she bent down and reached for a knife on the pushing train when she stood up holding the knife she then stabbed him on his neck he then screamed in pain and when she realized what she had done she fled the scene he tried to pursue her but was weakened due to the bleeding and fell on the ground. Geraldine then ran to the police station and tried to make a report against him for domestic violence. But this was kind of strange because she did not tell the police that she had stabbed him in the neck. The neighbors had reacted when they heard the screams and when they got to this couple's house, they found Majahana on the ground bleeding. They then rushed him to Baitbridge District Hospital where he died a few hours later. When she returned home from the police station, she heard that he had been fed to the hospital so she went there only to discover that he had tragically passed on. She was then arrested and transferred to Bulawayo where she spent a year and a half in remand prison. She was only tried and sentenced in April 2018 and sentenced to 15 years in prison. Apparently this was not their first time fighting. They had domestic violence issues. Relatives and neighbors described her as a very violent person. She was then transferred to Chikurubi Maximum Prison in Harare where she is serving her 15 year sentence. She will be released in 2033 at around 43 years of age, all because she could not control her temper. She had an opportunity to flee, but she did not use it, and this caused her to lose her freedom. The saddening thing about this case is that she is an orphan. Her grandmother, who was raising her kids, died, so currently she has no idea who is taking care of her babies. No one visits her in prison. She is all alone. She doesn't even know who is taking care of her kids because Gwanda is so far away from Harare. A simple DNA test would have solved this domestic dispute. Geraldine would not be in prison and her man would still be alive. Maybe they would still be married. This case is a stark reminder that we must never use violence as a means to solve problems. May his soul continue to rest in eternal peace. I make these true crime videos four times a week. To not miss any of them, please click the subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you will not miss any of them. Ciao.